So you're still living in Syracuse? Sort of. Sort of? Yeah, I don't have an apartment anymore. Yeah, we've literally been on tour since like the end of November. Whoa. Yeah, we just got off six months on the road. You look so adorable. Yeah, you do. The hat and the backpack. Merci. I can't even deal. Like I said, I started dressing like I did when I was eight again. Yeah, really so. Just speak freely to whoever asked the question. Mm -hmm. Don't edit yourself. Cool. Uh, at a certain point, you'll just throw something on the floor. Cool. And take it off. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk about what your style says about you? What my style says about me most of the time is that I literally cannot make up my mind about anything. Can you take something off and your hat? Yeah, just put it on the floor. Can you talk about assumptions that other people may or actually you have witnessed have about you based on your style? Oh yeah, I had a very, very nasty encounter last week that I'm still thinking about. We played a show in Dallas, Texas. When we showed up, we found out that someone had drawn an extraordinarily sexually explicit flyer and we were really unhappy about it. So at the end of our show, we stopped our set, and I said, hi, you know, I don't usually stop after sets, but this is really problematic. Women aren't really taken seriously in punk. And the Dallas Observer let a guy write an article where he said, you know, the singer of this band is a very strong feminist, and she said all of this stuff, but it's very, very hard to take her seriously because of her appearance. She was wearing a stripy t-shirt. She has blonde hair. She was wearing very unpunk shorts. And those are actually the shorts I'm wearing. I wore them today to show you just how unpunk they were. I have no idea where this guy got off thinking it was acceptable to devote one paragraph to my politics and three to my appearance, but according to him, it became a question of my authenticity. He said that because of how normal I looked, the name of our band, my violent stage performance, and my feminism seemed inauthentic. And it was totally a dude, of course. It was some Jeff person. And I have my fair share of like black and studs. If I wanted to, I could pull out like my infernal stronghold vest with like big spikes all over it. But that and feels as much like a costume as this. You're not being true to yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah, exactly. Take off your backpack. Yeah. So can you talk about the, the things in your life other than how you dress, where you express yourself fully, and how do you express yourself? What I do in this band comes directly from my life. What I write about are the experiences I have and how I feel. And I'm literally the most sensitive person I've ever known. I'm like a flower you that will if you look at it wrong. <laughs> I cry constantly. I'm like a very emotional human being. OK, okay. shoes. Shoes. They're so cute. What's your um, favorite body part? Oh. I've always had a problem with my size. I was five foot five by the time I was 12. I shot up, I'm like 5'10 or 5'11 now. Even at my thinnest, I've never really been smaller than a size eight. And um, like my best friend when I was in high school was a twin and she and her sister both grew up to be models. And we'd get in fights and she would always look at me and say, well, it's a good thing you're the smart friend because I'm the pretty friend. And I was always the character actress. I've grown up my whole life playing second fiddle to the pretty girl. And it took a really long time for me to realize that it's okay to be who I am. And that in somebody's eyes, I, I might be the pretty girl. Coming to terms with the amount of space I take up in the world, which is also like a feminist conceit too, because we're taught from birth to shrink ourselves. Erasing fine lines and wrinkles, shrinking to sizes, making varicose veins disappear. And it's like this language that wants women to not be visible. So take off sure, shorts, sure, 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 sure. sure. sure? Now you can see I have bruises. They're actually fading, but I'm covered in bruises from our last show. What is that about for you? Um, commitment. It's about like a full bodily commitment to the feelings I'm having and what I'm doing on stage. Shorts. Shorts. Yeah. Shorts. Fuck you, Jeff, mm -hmm. with for my very unpunk shorts. <laughs> <laughs> what point in your life, at what moment, have you felt the most vulnerable? There are websites that write about our band just because they know that it will get traffic to their website because people will go in the comments and say, this band sucks and I hope the lead singer gets raped and killed. There's nothing in the world that makes you feel more vulnerable than when you are trying to retain any semblance of your personhood and there's people on the internet that are just, who are these people that are just sitting behind their keyboard talking about how they hope I get raped? We live in a world where men feel so entitled to women's bodies that when they don't get what they want, they go on killing sprees. Mm -hmm. And yet everyone chalks it up to some mental illness and doesn't want to talk about how violence against women is a mental illness. Because we live in a capitalist heteropatriarchy that hates non-male people and hates transgender right. people and hates queer people. 
and hates young people and hates disabled people the and hates the elderly. The self-loathing people are in power. Yeah. There are so many more voices that are louder than those of us that are trying to protect ourselves and each other, saying, I ah, don't worry about it. Tights? Yeah. Tights. tights. You have a beautiful body. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. I've gained about 15 pounds in the last year, and I'm super insecure about it. Really? Yes. Yeah, you look I you used look. to be, at my worst, I was at the gym six days a week for an hour and a half a day. I would run about 30 miles a week, and most of what I ate was raw vegan, which was slang for I didn't eat food. I did it out of insecurity. I uh, saw that most of the men in my life were attracted to women that were thinner than I was, and I was in a very self-hating place. I felt very insecure. And meanwhile, I was working as an alterationist and working with women. They would come into me and say, I need this dress altered because my body is bad. And I'm like, no, 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 fashion's weird. Garments are weird. Like, it's totally normal to have to have a dress altered to fit your body. And I was so into that for everyone except myself. And there was a period a couple of years ago where I honestly felt like unless I got my body together, uh, I would never be successful. And there are still days now when I wake up and say, our band would be doing better if I was prettier, if I had a more traditional looking body, if I wasn't covered in tattoos, if I had long hair. You have a beautiful body. But I've never seen it that way. Ever since I was a kid, I, like I said, I've always been the funny friend. Always been the funny yeah, friend, I've always been the that. smart friend. You need to let go of that. When do you feel the most beautiful? When I'm riding my bike, always. I'm obsessed with flowers. Anyway, so I stopped my bike by the side of the road and I hacked all these daisies. I was out like riding my bike by the airport and I shoved them all in my backpack and I'm trying to ride in traffic and I've got these daisies whacking me in the back of the head because of the way the wind is going. And I realized that's pretty much the only time that I feel really, really beautiful is when my circumstances are so strange that they allow me to see myself as a small component of a much bigger world. So last question. Um, why is it, or um, just to, okay, in your body is a good place to be? I am so all over the place, and I have so many hobbies and such a massive diversity of interests, and my whole life is ruled by all these crazy stimuli from all over the place, and I'm just so easily influenced, and I've been an actress and a writer, and I've done film, and I've done costuming, and I've been in a band, and I've been in this other band, and I've, I have, you know, relationships, and I do all this crazy stuff, and I, right now I don't even have a place to live. Like, I sleep on my friend's floors, and I'm traveling all over the country, and this band is about to start traveling all over the world, and I don't deal well with chaos, and there's all this crazy stuff going on. So, in my body is a good place to be, because functionally speaking, I know at the end of the day that it's the only home I've ever had, and it's the only home I ever will have. So no matter how much I argue with it, at the end of the day, I have to treat it like my home. And home is where you're supposed to feel the safest. And home is where love happens. And home is where you're supposed to feel best about yourself. And uh, welcome home. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Okay, so that was beautiful, incredible. I we can't must transcribe how amazing your body is. Also. No, 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 like I'm freaking out about it. Well, I can stare at your body awesome. all day. <sighs> yeah, but, but you.